or as Mary Robinson said, an entire civilization was being destroyed. And as Sarah Roy said, the international community was doing nothing, just standing there, observing. It is true, and I'll get to it, under international law, Hamas rocket attacks were illegal, and they even have constituted a crime against humanity. It still must be said that those who criticize Hamas and its rocket attacks, they still have an obligation to show what other option did Hamas have. If you don't show another option, then the critics are in effect saying that the people of Gaza had a legal moral obligation to lie still and die. And having read the Geneva Conventions quite closely, I don't think there's anything in the Geneva Convention which says any people has an obligation to sit still and die. On December 27th, Israel then launched its assault on Gaza, and then for 22 days unleashed the full force of its firepower on the people of Gaza. What, what, what happened in Gaza during those 22 days? Already we're told, or it's being recorded as, there was a war in Gaza. Now, it seems to me a minimum condition for a war is there has to be two sides shooting at each other. If you don't meet that, so to speak, to use the fancy term, threshold condition of two sides shooting each other, it's hard to characterize what's happening as a war. Well, were two sides shooting at each other in Gaza? Let's see. After the events in Gaza, the Israelis were very proud of what they did. They walked around saying, we sure show those Arabs who are in charge now. And now the Arabs are afraid of us again what they like to call their deterrence capacity. Deterrence capacity is just a fancy technical term for restoring the Arab world's fear of Israel. And now they boast it, we sure show those Arabs who wins and who loses in war. But then one Israeli commentator, he was rather uh, disturbed by these claims of the Israelis, he said, uh, an important Israeli strategic analyst, he said, it is very dangerous for Israel to believe it won the war when there was no war. In reality, not a single battle was fought during those 22 days. A former Israeli foreign ministry official said there was no war. Hamas sat in its bunkers and came out when it was all over. There was no fighting in Gaza. There was no fog of war, as some people like now to claim in order to excuse what happened. Israel began the attack with an air assault on Gaza the first week. And the course of the full 22 days, there were 3,000 air sorties over Gaza, combat missions over Gaza by air. Every plane returned. No plane was down. No plane was even damaged, which is not too surprising because the Palestinians had no anti-aircraft defenses. It took as much courage to fly a combat mission over Gaza 
as it does to shoot a fish in a barrel. A week after the attack by air, the land and air, or the air and land assault, began. Uh, Israeli soldiers were equipped with special night fighting equipment. The Hamas militants couldn't even see them. So what happened in Gaza? Told it was a war. But then after this alleged war, that wasn't a war, Many Israeli soldiers who were in Gaza, they gave public and private testimonies about what they experienced. So listen to them, and you judge for yourself what happened in Gaza. Soldier, there was nothing there. Ghost towns, except for some livestock, nothing moved. Soldier. Most of the time, it was boring. There were not really too many events. Soldier, I did not see one single arrow the whole time we were there, that whole week. Soldier, everyone was disappointed about not engaging anyone. Soldier, usually we did not see a living soul, except for our soldiers, of course. Not a soul. Soldier, go ahead and ask soldiers how often they encountered combatants in Gaza. Nothing, no one. Soldier, there was supposed to be a tiny resistance force upon entry, but there just wasn't. No battles, no enemy in the field, nothing, no one, not a soul. But well, that's only half the story. The other half of the story casts the first half in a quite illuminating light. Some of you, most of you, all of you, are computer savvy. So when you get back to your rooms, enter the words on Google, breaking the silence, breaking the silence. And what will come up on your screen will be a compendium of soldier testimonies on what happened in Gaza. And then, when you have that compendium up on your screen, then enter the word under the search function. Enter the word insane. And you'll perhaps be surprised. There are seven references to the word insane because one soldier after another, after another, even though they were interviewed separately, they're not cueing each other, one soldier after another, after another, keeps saying, we used insane amounts of firepower in Gaza. We used insane amounts of firepower in Gaza. No enemy in the field no battles, no combat, but we used insane amount of firepower. One soldier said, this was firepower such as I had never known. There were, <clears throat> there were blasts, all, <coughs> excuse me, there were blasts all the time. The earth was constantly shaking. Another soldier said, on the ground you heard these thunderous blasts all day long. I mean, not just tank shelling, which was a tune we'd long gotten used to, but blasts that actually rock the outpost to the extent that some of us were ordered out of the house we were quartered in for fear it would collapse. The soldiers are firing into the horizon, but the reverberations from the firepower are such that the homes which they had commandeered, the Palestinian homes, began to shake and they were told to leave. 